All right, so in the last one, we actually were working with commands on how to modify the player's HP. So on this one, we're actually going to move on to client-side interactions. So we're gonna write a simple command. We're gonna modify our little hello world here. And we're gonna write a command that specifically interacts with the client. So if you haven't already noticed, there is a console when we press F8. This console we can actually print things to, and only the client will be able to see it. So, if we do alt emit client, and we're going to go ahead and call it hello world. And we're going to do a colon there because we want to use this kind of format in the future. This will help us with organization and various other things as well. So. We're going to emit this to the client. So alt emit client. So when you think of client, you need to think of this file over here, the client folder with the client MJS. So we're going to go ahead and modify client MJS and import alt from there. Okay. Now that we've imported alt, we need to do our next step here. Import alt or all as alt from alt. Apologies for that. So now, if we do alt on server, and if you recall, we called it hello world with a capital W and a colon in there. We're going to go ahead and paste that in here just to make sure we get it right. And then we're going to have a function, and we're going to print to the console world. And the reason why we don't use console log here is because that does not work with alt v. You need to use alt.log. There's a few other cases like that, but we'll get to those in due time. So we'll start our server. We'll hit F8 and reconnect. And then we'll type slash hello. And it looks like we made a mistake. So if we go and take a look at it. Ah, so this actually needs to be player. And we don't need to pass an argument. So I forgot that this needs to have a player first because how are we supposed to know who it's emitting to? And another interesting thing, if you do alt.emit client and you do null here, that will actually emit it to every single player in the server. So we don't need that in this case. So we're just gonna go ahead and just the player that is requesting it, we're gonna send it to. So let's start the server again, reconnect, run our hello command, and if we press F8, we will see world right there in the console. So that means that we have now successfully talked from the, or successfully done a communication from server to client. So in this case, what could we use this for? Like, what could we possibly use this for? Well, one thing is spawning a vehicle. So we're gonna make a command. It's gonna be called VEH, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna, open this up a little bit, and we're gonna do something similar to what we did up here with set HP. So instead of the argument not being defined or the link being zero, we do VEH and we do model, okay? And then we need to check and tr or basically we need to try to spawn a vehicle, okay? So we're gonna do a try here and we're gonna do a catch and then we're gonna do const vea or new vehicle equals alt.vehicle and then we're going to spawn that vehicle. Now if we look at the wiki, we're going to go take a look and see what vehicle looks like so you guys can get a basic understanding of what's happening here. So we're doing alt.vehicle, okay? And once this loads, just give it a moment. Any second now, hopefully. <laughs> All right. So down here, we'll see new vehicle. It's asking for a model, X, Y, and Z position, roll pitch, and yaw. So in order to get this to spawn directly on the player, for instance, we do player dot pos dot x. So that is the X position. But if you do recall, the first parameter actually needs to be a string. 
So if we do argument zero, that is the argument that is passed from the player. And the reason why we wrap it in a try and catch is we don't know what models will actually work. So if it tries to spawn a invalid model, it will catch it here and it won't do anything else. So that's why we're wrapping this portion of code in a try and catch. So let's go ahead and finish with the rest of the spawning. So if we do player pos.x, player.pos.y, player.pos.z, and we're just gonna set the rotation to zero, zero, and zero because that doesn't necessarily matter unless we really want a specific rotation when we're spawning it. And usually the rotation you want to change is just this last one. But in this case, we don't need that. So now if this is successful, uh, we want to warp them into the player or into the vehicle. This is a common functionality that you'd actually see in something like San Andreas multiplayer or something else as well. So we're going to take this ultimate client and we're going to put this right here. Okay. And then we're going to make this one called vehicle set into. Okay. So we're calling a very specific function called vehicle set into, and we need to pass the vehicle that we just created to this or to the client. And then otherwise what we can tell the player if the model's incorrect, that model was incorrect. Great, so now that we have this, let's go ahead and set this up on client side. So I'm gonna copy this very specific text here, go over to client side. Actually, it's supposed to be right here. Paste that in here. And because we have now supplied an argument after, we need to take that same argument on the client side, paste it right there, because this is the argument that is being passed after the text, okay? So everything past this text is now an argument that you can receive on client side, okay? So now that we have this, we need to set the player into the vehicle. So this is where we begin working with natives. So I'm gonna do import all as native from natives, okay? And in our autocomplete, we actually have access to all of the natives. So if I do native underscore, you'll see these ones with the hashes, but they're not very useful. So let's just keep typing. So let's do set into vehicle. So set pet into vehicle. That kind of looks like something we need. So we're gonna click on that and it's gonna give us the rest of the information here. So this is where things get interesting. So one thing we need is the local player. So on client side, we have the local player because this is the only player that it's being emitted to. In order to get that, we need their script identification. And a script identification is something that GTA Network, or not even GTA Network, I'm sorry, <laughs> taking a trip into the past, um, Alt-V uses to determine what pedestrians walking around, what pedestrian to move around, what entity to move around, all that sort of stuff as well. So a lot of things have script IDs, even vehicles do. So in order to get these things, we need to do something very specific. So for the local player, we're gonna do alt player local. And this is now the local player. And the last parameter we need to put in here is script ID, just like that. So this is gonna give us a number. And that number, we're gonna plug in right here. So this is the local player's script ID. So the player that we emitted it to, the player that called this command, this is their number, okay? And then the next one we need is the vehicle's number. So if we do new vehicle and then script ID, that's how we get that. And then the seat index number, and negative one is actually the driver's seat, uh, zero is passenger, and then driver's, driver's back seat is one, and then passenger's back seat is two. So it's negative one, zero, one, and two. Okay, and the last thing that's a little bit tricky about this is that this isn't actually gonna work outright because on the script side, when we spawn this vehicle, there's a small delay so when the vehicle spawn, there's a delay. 
So you have to wait for the vehicle to spawn. It needs to show up on the player's side, and then we can set them into the vehicle. So we need to wrap this in a timeout. And a timeout is a period of time that the server will wait before they attempt to run this command. So if I put a very small timeout of 100 milliseconds in here, I toss that right in there, that will warp us into the vehicle and put us into the driver's seat. And the reason that we have to do alt here is because this is client-side code and some things just don't always work <laughs> the way they intend to. So normally in regular JavaScript, you would be doing just set timeout. So if you're on the server side and you want to use any kind of delays, you need to use set timeout and not alt set timeout because that doesn't exist on server side. It'll only exist on client side. So let's restart our server. We'll do VEH and then we'll spawn ourselves into a vehicle. So let's reconnect. And we're going to do slash VEH Akuma. And it looks like our game went ahead and crashed. So internal field out of bounds. Interesting. Ah. So what we missed here was a new. So yes, we do make mistakes while we're writing these things from time to time. So as you can see, Prettier actually took the parameters and spread them out like this, so it's a little easier to read. And we have to do a new here for this to work. So we're going to go ahead and start this again. Reconnect. Slash VEH, Kuma. And that has now put us onto the vehicle. And we can now drive away. So that covers the vehicle command and working with some client side natives. And we're going to go ahead and finish up this tutorial for today and we'll move on to the next one. Thanks for watching.